I don't even know if y'all knew this, but I am a big Danny McBride fan. I am a big Jody Hill fan. I am a big fan of damn near all their work, going back to the Fist Foot Way. Of course, the first show that everyone knows about the most, Eastbound and Down, the one that people kind of somehow skimmed over and didn't watch enough, Vice Principals, and now we have Righteous Gemstones, which might be the best of all three. It's cutting it close. I'm in the rarity that thinks Eastbound and Down is definitely my least favorite of these three shows, and I think Vice Principals is my favorite. I said I was going to wait until at least it was matched two seasons for two seasons, but even now, I can't say definitively I like Righteous Gemstones better, but I can't say definitively I do, don't do like Righteous Gemstones better because it's not fair because there was a solid conclusion to Vice Principal since it knew it was ending after two seasons. But this wrapped up. What did I think of season two? Was it better than season one? That is something I'm really on the mend about. Because I started off saying, like, I'm enjoying this, but it's nowhere... It's not, not nowhere, but it's not on season one's level. And as it progressed, like the middle of the season, I was like, okay, this might be just as good, if not better. In the last two episodes, I really, really enjoyed, but did it end in a way where I was like, I can definitively say it's better than the first season? It did not. And normally, if I'm kind of like, mm, I give the edge to the first one. So I'm probably going to give the slight edge to the first season, but this season was still really fucking good and... I mean, we knew it would be, and I'm only more hyped that season three is already renewed, guys, if you have not seen that yet. Um, overall, this season, it was kind of interesting, you know, like when the fucking opening credits happen. It was like, it's got one of those openings, if y'all remember back to like the first episode, where you kind of, because it starts off with John Goodman wrestling, but it's not John Goodman wrestling. It's, you know, the kid version of him. It's like one of those, like, let's go back in time and show some shit that's going to build up to shit later in the season. And we get to know John Goodman as the wrestler. And you're watching this, and it's like an extended opening that lasts for like seven minutes or something like that. And the whole time you're like, what is this old school wrestling show I'm watching? Like, is this righteous fucking gemstones? Like, there was no cue of that until the guy rode home on his bike and, you know, his gemstones on the mailbox. You're like, okay. Yeah, like it is one of those openings where you're like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, is this, did I click on the right thing? But show was all better for it because once you brought that out, Eli, played by John Goodman, was just, he was, he was so much like more in the fold in terms of like, he wasn't just the guy rolling his eyes. You know, he'd come out and say something with the church or he was just roll his eyes at his kids and make dumb remarks. And this season, he was a little bit off the chain, you know? Like, there's more of a wild card element that I thought made Eli Gemstone a more likable and even better character. Kelvin and Keith, dude. Keith might be the most underrated character in the show. He is insanely good at being awkward, is he not? There's something about this man where he's so seamless in his awkwardness. To the point where you're like, is this even acting or does he just always look and sound like this? And they found this guy off the street and they were just like, dude, please just be you and come on our show and act like Adam here. Hi, I'm Adam. Um, Kelvin on the show this is what you'll call him. Like, Kelvin? Okay. You're just going to act like you're his friend and y'all are going to do like weird, almost gay shit the whole time. Because that's the big thing. I think a lot of people, including myself, are even like, are they gay? Because they seem really gay. That's fine if you are, but at the same time, like, are they gay? Like, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this, and they're like, no, they're a hundred percent at some point going to come out and say that, you know, they're gay. I actually have a different theory. I think they're just never going to do it, and I think that's the joke. Is because like it leaves you with this like uncomfortable like tension where you're just like. Like, are they gay or not? What's going on? <laughs> like, I shouldn't say uncomfortable because, you know, PC people. But, like, it's the same thing as, you know, it's not because they're gay it's uncomfortable. But, like, any, like, you're just like, are y'all going to kiss or what? Like, y'all get this close and y'all are just it's this close to being a thing and then you're not and you pull out then you go in. Like, it's, like, what's happening here? And you feel that feeling with them. And I think, honestly, they're having a fun time at poking fun of that the best they can. And I think that'll be a thing or at the very end of the show like last season maybe Keith or Adam leans in and tries to kiss him and then the person's like whoa whoa what are you doing 
I mean, nothing wrong with that, but what are you doing? It's just like, oh, I thought we were a thing. He's like, you were throwing vibes. He's like, I don't know what vibes I was throwing. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Was definitely not throwing vibes. Like, I could see him do some shit like that. We were just like, what? The whole show, y'all were clearly... Yeah, I think they're going to run it more in that direction, personally. That's my thoughts. Um, The Cycle Ninjas. That shit had me just... Like, I was so ready to figure out who these people are. Of course, we find out it's the Listens at the very end of the fucking thing. Eric Andre and his chick. Now, I didn't hate that reality. that That's what it was revealed that it was. Um, At the same time, though, it's tough, dude. Like, because I like it. But it also became predictable at the end, too. There was no, like, suspense on who it was. Because it literally got to a point going to the final episode where you're like, okay, is it this person? It's this person. Could it be this person? And there was literally only one person left that had been in the show. And that people, I should say, Eric Andre and his, like, girl. Like, that's it. That's all that was left. And, like, there was nothing else. That was it. Not a damn thing else. So you were like, well, we know where this is going. And you know what? It's a comedy show. But at the same time, there is a little something extra there when it comes to Righteous Gemstones. So you kind of hope they would put a little more into it. But as good as they have been, like Jody Hill, Danny McBride, all these guys, David Gordon Green, they are a bit like not in... Like they don't go for the surprise factor. I mean, uh, we can say... I'm not going to reveal it in case y'all haven't watched it because it's such a good show. Vice Principals had a similar thing where the end of it was kind of obvious, but it was still damn good. This same thing. I kind of had hoped, you know, as we're kind of on a stepping stone type of thing where even the reveal in the first season of who's like setting them up, I saw it coming. I'm like, okay, come on. We know who this is. I was hoping maybe they learned from that and were ready to take it in ways and routes that... We just were like, oh, shit, like, you know, we can get the comedy and we get the solid, serious stuff like we do get, but maybe it's evolved to where it actually blows our mind a little bit, too, and we're not quite there with it, and while that's okay, because at the end of the day, it's still a dumb comedy show, there is a small part of me that wishes they could because they are choosing to raise the Annie and, you know, Annie up and push in all their chips, dude, and make this something more than that, and if you're going to do that, I kind of wish you would execute not the way it's done because they're nailing that, but like the mystique and mystery of it a little bit better. But also in the same sense, it's like, dude, there's giving us way more than any normal comedy would. So I wasn't that mad about that. I will say, you know, obviously we're in spoiler territory now talking about the ending, but the fact that it, uh, I did love the ending, how it was kind of like, it looked like it was going to let them live and then go into a, a new season <laughs> and then in this one like it looked like it was over they're doing their church thing and then out of nowhere it's flashing back and you're like okay why is it putting us back on them we know exactly what this is going to be now and of course that is exactly what it was like they're going to get off in some way and i loved how they came up instead of like the red fucking you know lighting on the motorcycles you had the purple lighting and like the snow mobiles and shit and they rode up on him and he's like get the guns and they had just got done watching young guns and there's that part where like Amelia Estevez like comes up out the safe after he falls down like that shit was fucking amazing like it cracked me up so hard the fact because I didn't see that coming like he just slides her off and she goes boom and she like ba basically like she's coming out of a casket like can barely move like ah. And then they just, even they're like, what the fuck? Then they light her up. And then he didn't even go for the gun. He just takes off in the distance and freezes Jack Torrance style in The Shining. <laughs> and the wolves get to him. It was, it was pretty, pretty fucking satisfying overall, I think. Wasn't a very funny episode on the season finale, but it was good. Baby Billy, man. Maybe my favorite character, uh, getting to, you know, have the toilet baby again. It's like, it's a toilet baby. <laughs> goes over there saves it you know that was like redemption for him it's crazy how something so ridiculous can be a redemption for him and let's talk about like the previous redemption 
where he uh, messed around with uh, his kid. What was his kid's name? No, at any other time. Ended up being Macaulay Culkin. That was so cool how Macaulay Culkin played him. I was so hyped to see that. I was like, what? Come on, man. Like, that, that is a surprise guest. I feel like I don't see Macaulay Culkin in anything. And I hear of little things like, oh, he was in this. And I'm just like, well, I haven't seen it. So I don't know. But for just to see him healthy and looking like he's right, you know, he's he's doing good, it looks like. You know, despite Baby Billy ditching him, right? Obviously, it's fiction. But it's it was cool seeing him on screen. And I liked him giving him, you know, the right hook. It's the only way. And it was cool to see this out of Baby Billy because he has been reverting back now that's his character and we all know danny mcbride and his team are the best at making douchebags likable a la fucking danny mcbride it's kenny powers you know that was the beginning of like okay if you don't count this foot the foot this way which was that way too but baby billy man like at the end of the day they do add in that little bit of something and it's the smallest inkling of something you know it's like wow his moment of turning which we know will probably fuck it up again in the future is him saving a baby from a porta potty only these shows man but just to have that glimmer of like okay man like he is maybe on some right of a track to just see just an inkling of just like there is some good in baby billy was kind of refreshing being such a big fan of the character but he doesn't make no mistake need to drift too too far away um judy and bj they were great this season classic fucking banter there's even the one moment where eli's just like oh my god she just gets worse and it's so fucking spot on because she does she gets worse and worse and worse with her responses the moment she had with bj's sister in the bathroom at bj's fucking uh baptism dude oh my god hilarious and all fucked up at the same time like For her to be like, we all know that brothers, like our siblings, want to fuck their other sibling. And she's like, what? The sister's like, what? She's like, look, fucking, oh my God. Uh, Jesse and Kelvin, I know they would sit up there wanting to fuck me. You're like, oh my God, gross, Judy. It's like, doesn't mean I want to do it. So I know you're over here looking at BJ's fine ass thinking you want to fuck him. Like, this is the type of banter (laughs) that Judy brings and just murders it with. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it's also hilarious if you can get into that type of thing. Not that specific type of thing, but that type of ridiculous comedy. And she knocks it out of the park. She's a scene stealer, no doubt about it. BJ was funny, as usual, with his his one earring in. Yeah, I got one too, Beej. But I got them in both ears. I don't even fucking think about that so i'm like why are my ears pierced still maybe i should just take them out but it's also kind of who i am at this point i've already established that i'm the earring guy so maybe that's just me just like i became the movie guy somehow but uh one of his best moments dude like when he got that ninja star in the fucking head from the cycle ninjas that shit was fucking hilarious dude he's like they tried to get me but i was too fast (laughs) he's just got the fucking ninja star sticking out of his head just completely oblivious to it i Part of me was like, I'm so glad they never addressed that and they had to like pull it out. But the other part of me was like, I kind of almost wanted to see his reaction. I wouldn't doubt if maybe they filmed that and let it on, left it on the cutting room floor because they're like, okay, maybe the freak out's too much. Works a little bit better, just like in and out of your brain, much like the Ninja Star was. But yeah, I thought that was great. The whole fucking hospital scene was great. Fucking McBride, of course, Jesse. He just, he just tosses the fucking smoke grenade in, dude. He's just like, oh, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, who threw a smoke? He's like, yeah, who threw a smoke grenade? Fucking great. Um, Who else, dude? Kelvin, I know we kind of talked about but his whole God Squad, that shit. It was so over-the-top ridiculous, but it was so funny. It reminded me a lot of, like, the Lord's Force from Work- Workaholics, if you watch that as well. And if you don't, you definitely should. Um, Just as funny of a show to me, but not quite like you know it doesn't have that serious nature with it it's more turn your brain off funny where this one's turn your brain off funny but it's oddly like coded by a serious show which was what makes these shows that mcbride does so fucking great on hbo but yeah um trying to make sure i didn't miss anything you know everybody had to bear the cross it was great 
when Keith had to bear the cross, he's there just like, no, you don't have to. He's like coming out of his pants, like fucking doing dropping down the splits and the thong. <laughs> like, there's so much crazy shit in this show. It's so fucking good, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's the best, dude. It's 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 comedy gold. I've been trying to get people on it since like its premiere because I've been a big fan. I know a lot of people are fans of Eastbound and Down, but they didn't really follow that over to Vice Principles for some reason. And then now it seems like they're jumping on this bandwagon. But it seemed like a lot of people didn't watch Vice Principles. Go back and watch that if you didn't. It's so fucking good, if not better than all three. And this one, it's knocking out of the park. And I'm glad it's coming back because there's no guarantee with these shows, you know. Like the first season, or the first show, fucking Eastbound and Down, went for five seasons, I believe. And there was like six, seven, eight episodes a season. Not a lot of episodes to go around. And then... The second show, Vice Principals, for it to just be two seasons and done, not canceled, literally they just planned a half and half, like one part of the story, second part of the story. And then for them to come back with this show, you know, this could have been it, but they were like, no, we got more. And it honestly does to some degree feel like a conclusion, so it definitely could have been it. It does not leave you with that cliffhanger that you might have thought you were going to get at first. It took it there at the end, which was pretty fucking cool. But also kind of like, fuck, I do like hanging on to something. But, you know, that's just how we are. You know, when we get actual closure, we're like, yeah, but I wish I had something to look forward to. But when we don't get closure completely, it's, oh, God, dude, I got to wait a whole year. Blah, blah, blah. I'm COVID and all that might be two years. All that bullshit. You know how we are. At the end of the day, I'm just happy. We got a good new show. And Jody Hill, fucking Danny McBride, David Gordon Green, all these guys are still doing this shit on HBO and just knocking it out of the park. And the actors they get for these shows are still knocking it out of the park. Such a good show. If you have not watched Righteous Gemstones and you don't mind spoilers and all that jazz, I hope this urged you to. And if you're for some reason, like I watched the finale and that's it, I hope this hurts you too so good definitely check it out season three has been in the works now or not in the works it's been renewed so we will get a season three guys hallelujah love y'all see you peace